Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Greetings, 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 saints, family, and friends all over the world. We thank you again for tuning in to another Christian's Endeavor broadcast of Sunday School on the Run. All right? And I'm going to try to get you straight and get you out of here. Amen? Today. We have a very wonderful lesson today. And we just pray that you've been blessed since our last chat. Uh, well, we got a lot to unpack today. Another very rich Sunday school lesson uh, with practical implications. Yeah, say that with me. Practical implications. Amen. In other words, these are some things that we are going to have to apply that we should already as Christians be applying. All right. But uh, we thank God. We thank God. Um, we're going to have uh, a text from out of First John, uh, the epistle of First John. Um, and if you would go ahead and get your text, your Bibles ready, uh, turn to that fourth chapter of First John, and we'll be reading from the second to the third verse. And then we're going to pick up the 13th through the 17th verses. And lastly, we're going to pick up the 5th chapter, the 4th and the 5th verse. All right. And this is actually out of our International Sunday School booklet. So if you have that, the ISSL, the International Sunday School lesson, that's where our text is going to be coming from today. And today is going to be August the 22nd, 2021. I tell you, we are moving fast. We are moving fast. Before we know it, it's going to be Thanksgiving, it's going to be Christmas, and then it's going to be mid-January. We're still on the ground. All right? So we're going to have to, just like Sister Dottie people said, get our houses in order. All right? All right? because Jesus is soon to come. All right, so today's lesson title is going to be A Conquering Faith. A Conquering Faith. A Conquering Faith. Now that sounds good all by itself, right? Yes, everybody wants to be a conqueror, right? Yeah, uh-huh. But our... Uh, John is going to tell us what we need to do in order to be able to be a conqueror. <laughs> so that's what we're going to learn about in our lesson today. So certainly we pray that you stay tuned. A very practical learning lesson. And you all know that I like to teach and break it down because it is with hopes that you're going to take this word and you're going to apply it in your life. If you're not going to apply it, it's no sense in you listening to the word because all it's going to do is get you in trouble. Because uh, rest assured, you're going to be held accountable for what you hear, all right? But no worries. This is good news, okay? Um, so you stand to benefit if you listen, if you learn, and if you do it, all right? So we're going to pray, and we're going to get right into our Sunday School lesson. I'm Minister Coleman, and I bring you greetings from New Straight Gate Baptist Church. We're located at 4407 Bourne Road Southeast. Washington, D.C. Pastor Coleman is our shepherd and founder. So let's pray and let's get on into the lesson for today. All right, let us bow. Father God, again, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for all things. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you for a hope of one day being able to see you, Lord, in all of your glory. Father God, we thank you for this lesson about a conquering faith. Certainly, we want to be conquerors, Lord. So we're asking that you would teach us today, come into the midst of our lesson, anoint the servant, Lord God, that will deliver this message, this lesson to your people. Father God, and let he that is listening, if they have an ear, a spiritual ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. 
Father God, again, we thank you for Sunday schools being conducted all over the world. Bless your people. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So once again, our lesson text is going to be coming out of, should you not have the International Sunday School Lesson book, um, but you can locate the New Testament first epistle, first epistle of John. John has three epistles, um, and you will find it if you go to Revelations, the last book in the Bible, um, for those who may be a little new at this. Um, before Revelation, you have Jude, the book of Jude. And then if you go one book over from Jude, you'll find the uh, epistle of John. And there are three epistles. We're coming out of the first epistle of John. And it's going to start out the fourth chapter and the second through the third verse. And then we'll read the 13th through the 17th verse. And then we will go over to the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John. And we will read the fourth through the fifth verse. Uh, now, so this is what I would like to do. <clears throat> Instead of just reading from the second verse of that fourth chapter, there's a lot of meat um, that will complement the text of our Sunday school lesson. Um, and it is throughout the first three chapters of this first epistle of John. But what I would like to do is at least before we get to that second and third verse, I would like to read the first verse, the first, the second, and the third, and the fourth. How about that? The first through the fourth verses. And that would be our first set of scriptures that we will read towards this lesson. Um, so but before we get into this lesson, let's just do a little bit of learning. Let's do a little bit of uh, have some fun time here. So let's talk about our lesson topic. The title of this lesson, A Conquering Faith. Now when you think of a conquering faith, what do you think of? What does the word conquering mean to you? So I took the liberty of writing down what I felt could be synonymous with conquering. Okay, and first I would say strong, okay, it's almost like a Scrabble, we can kind of play virtual Scrabble, all right, so how about strong, um, what about mighty, what about winning, victorious, enduring, and we learned about enduring. That was in one of our other uh, Sunday school lessons. How about fearless? Yeah. Confidence? Yes. Experience. A conquering faith and experienced faith. How about skillful? Skillful. What about, and we and we're gonna hear this in a lesson, overcoming faith. Huh? A conquering faith is an over overcoming faith. And lastly, I have, and don't be cheating now. If y'all didn't think of these words that I got down here, y'all don't get no points. Alright. What about a saving faith? Hmm? conquering a saving faith okay like 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 yeah like a saving faith let me just keep it at that okay now talk let's talk about faith now we talked about faith also and i know y'all got this y'all got this okay faith is a belief in god right it is having belief in god if you have faith in anything else other than God and his word and, and what God has done, that's not the faith that we're talking about. We're talking about a biblical faith, 
a biblical faith. There's a lot of faith floating around here, but I'm talking about a biblical faith in the one God of the Bible. How about an expectant hope? That's what faith is. Faith is an expectant hope, right? And I got one more for you. What is faith? Faith is invisible evidence. It is substance. Faith represents an invisible substance. You don't see it with your natural eye, but your spiritual eye see it. I told you all before that we have senses. We have senses of the spirit the same way we have physical senses and we have five of them. And I still get a little lost with this fifth one. But let me see if I can remember the ones that I can't remember. Our senses consist of our eyes. We can see. Our senses consist of our ears. We can hear. Our senses consist of our nose. We can smell. It consists of our tongue. We can taste. And I got it. And our senses consist of our hands we can touch. Well, as it is in the natural, it is also can be applicable in the spirit. And many things are applicable in the spirit, such as we remember scripture telling us eyes, you know, and our eyes will be blind. I once was blind, but now I see. Well, they're not talking about natural sight. They're talking about spiritual sight. Your spiritual sight was blind. How about this one? Let he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Well, they're not talking about your natural ear. Because um, your natural ear is, is on a whole new different level than the Spirit. Or let's say the Spirit is on a whole new different level than your natural how about that? All right. And scripture talks about the spirit. I mean, the natural, the spiritual ear correction being dull. Okay. That it can't hear what the spirit is saying. So some kind of way there's a blockage in your spiritual ear whereby you don't interpret or perceive the decibels of the spirit. Okay. What the spirit is saying. Let's see. Talk about smell. You know, in the spirit, God gives you a promise. And in that promise, it may be so close that you may say, I can smell the aroma of this promise. Or I can taste this promise so bad. I can, I'm on the verge of it. It's so close that in the spirit, I feel I can touch it. I can put my hands on it. Okay. So that's three and one that I just gave you. All right. Isn't it so good if we can feel that way? We can smell it. We can smell the aroma, the sweet aroma of what God has promised and know that it's close to coming to pass. If we can taste it, mm, 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 mm. Our spiritual taste buds. And if we can touch it in the spirit, we can touch it in the spirit. We can, like they say, reach up and grab hold. They're not talking about you reaching up in the, in the normal atmosphere and grabbing hold of spiritual things. They're talking about reach out in the spirit, okay, and grab hold of it, touch it attain it okay all right so everything is spiritual when we talk about god's word we cannot approach god's word with a carnal mentality or you're gonna miss it and if you miss it you're gonna miss it okay so it's always spiritual and i speak this lesson is catered to believers you know it's catered to believers. God's word is catered to the believer because an unbeliever won't understand what's really going on, okay? Unless they have that element or that seed of faith, which comes from God, he has to give us understanding of his word. We can't just be so intellectual that we think that we can understand his word. We got a lot of in, in, in 
intellectualism out there with people you know they can boast that i read the bible like three or four times yeah i did the bible in one year well what did you learn from it uh, never mind don't answer that question what are you doing with the word of god can we see you living out what you have studied and claim that you have uh the amount of reading that you have conquered okay and this goes even for those who can recite you know because they boast they, they exalt themselves because they feel that they can recite by heart different things in the Bible. But the question is, the real question is, is we, it's not whether or not you can speak the word of God verbatim. It's about what is in your heart and what all you are applying to this life. Okay? So that's what this is all about. All right, so we're already into like 15 minutes. So I'm going to go on ahead and move on with this lesson. But in our title, you know, there's a lot to unpack. We got to we gotta unpack, we got to massage this lesson, okay? So we pick apart these words um, so that we can gain a better understanding. So a little bit about um, this book of John, 1 John. So, we understand that this is the same apostle, John, was one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He was in the in crowd. He was one of Jesus' boys. He was like, posse? Yeah. Um, in fact, there's a, a nickname for him in the Bible. It's the disciple that Jesus loved. How about that? Huh? Would we like to have that? The disciple that Jesus loved. So John is responsible for writing the books of St. John, the gospel according to St. John. And also it goes to next to these three books, the epistle, the pastoral letters that he wrote um, in the first, second, a third epistle of John and then his last book will be the book of Revelation which is the last book of the Bible okay um, now a little bit more about this book now this letter is not attributed to any one church like so many of the letters would um, pretty much uh, spell out who they are addressed to well this letter this first epistle of John is not spelled out to any one church um, but it's spelled out to all churches you know it's a universal letter that is befitting for all churches okay and all believers all right all churches and all believers now, some of the key words uh, that we are going to hear or that we should focus on, and you may want to jot this down um, so that you can go back and do a little bit of, uh, you know, looking up these words later on. You may want to write these down because you're going to see these words again, not just in our lesson, but throughout your Christian uh, walk and your Christian studies. And not just that, but now many of these words are real time today. Um, these are things that are happening in our world today. All right. Yeah, I know um, this book was written about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 85 nine, through 90 A.D. Um, but we're going to fast forward. And this, this 85 to 90 A.D., can you imagine this was like almost like, uh, over 2,000 years ago. Hmm? Okay, so this is back again after Jesus. So, <clears throat> it's been a long time, but some of these same issues are even more prevalent in our society today and within the circle of the church. So we really do have to pay attention to this. We really do have to take heed we really do have to put our radar on um, so that we can be able to perceive and detect uh, these warnings 
that the writer John would be giving us today in this lesson. Okay? And you're going to find <clears throat> that uh, the writer John is a cut and dry in, uh, in his disposition. Um, the way that he carries uh, or describes or explains the word of God in many cases, he is either right or left. He's up or down. He's, he's really in between. He's not in between. Um, so he don't speak in shades of gray. All right. If I can say that. Um, many of our ministers today, they speak in shades of gray. They don't tell you just like it is. All right. They give you a medium. Okay. They give you a medium and many people want to follow a medium. They want to straddle in between the word of God. But John here is going to call out things the way that they are. He calls out darkness. He calls out light in contrast. He calls out that which is evil, that which is good. Um, he calls out love. He calls out hate. Um, so this is, this is how he carries this book. And so heaven or hell... All right, so he's cut and dry. It's either here or here. It's not in the middle. And so we appreciate that. We just want to take that with us, that thought with us as we go into this lesson. Now for a, key, a few key words. <clears throat> Heretic. Heresy. Okay. Heretic or heresy. All right, and just a, a brief definition is both are opposing to God's word. Okay, a heretic or heresy communications both oppose God's word or they oppose that which is true. Okay, biblically true. Okay, all right, heretic is like a noun. That's like a person. Um, heresy is like the action part of them, okay? All right, the next word is going to be discernment. Discernment. And we've talked about discernment before. Discernment, in, in brief description, is the spiritual ability to judge and or be guided by or to understand uh spiritual messages okay all right now you don't have any evidence nothing is appearing before you but there's a knowing there's a spiritual knowing and we call that knowing or um maybe the world may say in the secular term they may say intuition but we of the spirit it is a gift it is a spiritual gift and it's called discernment, okay? Discernment, to be able to discern a person's message or discern or decipher the time. There's a scripture that talks about that we need to be able to discern the time that we are in, the times that we're in, all right? So we have this ability, this channel, this portal whereby the Spirit of God speaks to us on the inside and that is that spirit of discernment okay you're able to judge things all right um uh remember that uh over i think in the fourth chapter of hebrews where it says that the spirit of god the word of god is able to judge the intents of the heart um, it can cut through bone and marrow, almost like a scalpel, very precise, precision. Um, that's that spirit that you have, the ability to discern. That's a good spirit because a person may be speaking out their mouth that which is untrue. And it may be a bit tricky for your natural intellect to be able to determine 
exactly what part of it is untrue. It don't sound right, but I can't quite place my finger and tell you exactly what it is that's, that's bugging me about what they said. Well, that spirit of discernment will come in and it will be like a laser light and it will go straight to that word that you have in you and that spirit, that portal that you will allow God to speak to you concerning will go straight to whatever is untrue and it will po point out, it'll point out to you, there it is right there. This is the part that you have problems with, okay? And it's just a good gift to have. So if you don't have it or you don't feel you have it, pray for it because we need it in times like these. You've got to be able to discern between what is good, what is evil, what is true, what is false, who's coming in Jesus' name, and who's really uh, not of Jesus. You need to be able to determine all of that, okay? All right, another word is incarnate, incarnate, all right? And incarnate means Jesus in the flesh, God or the Spirit of God in the flesh, incarnate. Um, he's in human form. Okay, so this is what Jesus did for us. He came as God. He came to earth in human form. Okay. All right. And another word would be era. Okay. Era meaning that which is not true. Okay. And we're talking about the word of God and how people may interpret it or distribute it. If they distribute it in truth, then it's true. But if they misinterpret it or if they try to twist it to something false, then it's error. You know, they err in their way and they will call someone else to error. Okay. Um, so this is a distorted belief about God's word. Okay. Therefore, they err. All right. And um, I believe that's it. That's the words that I just want to give you for right now. Um Okay, so the our lesson, some of the problems that we are going to address here in the text is going to be false teachers that leads Christians astray. Um, we have false teachers, we have false prophets, and we have some false apostles, okay? And all claiming to be sent by God with a message for his people, okay? But in essence, they are actually false teachers, okay? So we're going to be addressing that issue today. John is going to tell us how to be able to address that issue, okay? Um, all right, and we're also going to be talking about the love factor, okay? Meaning... Um, we are going to be able to interpret who's truly of God or a person of God based upon observing their love walk, discerning their love walk, okay? Um, spiritually discerning it, all right? And um, the last uh, part that we're going to talk about is how we will be able to overcome as Christians in the world, okay? Jesus said that I uh, pray for them that uh, though they are left in the world, that they will not be overcome by the word, world, okay? He doesn't want us to be overcome by the world, um, to take on the form of the world. So... It is our faith that causes us to be able to overcome the temptations to be or to conform to the world. And so our last part, which is in that fifth chapter, is going to teach us things about that. All right. So let's get on into our lesson. I'm going to read first. And then we're just going to come right back through. We're going to break everything down. We're going to summarize. And then we're going to give you this lasting point. And then we're going to roll up out of here. All right. Okay, and I do I understand we about 30 minutes. It's all right. It's all right. This is a good lesson. Okay, this is a life-changing, life-saving, right-now word. Okay, 
So we need to be able to take time out for those things. Put the first things first, okay? We can sit down real easy and watch sports for two, three hours, all right? Or watch some foolishness on the television for hours at a time and not complain. We have to become disciplined to be able to get a word from God, all right? But I promise you, I'll let you out before one hour. How about that, okay? Scouts on. I said, we already been through a lot already. Okay, so we just want to elaborate a little bit more as we read through these scriptures. But pretty much you got the lesson already. I already broke it down for you. All right, so I'm going to read King James Version. Um, this is First John, the fourth chapter. I'm going to be reading, as I said again, <clears throat> that first through the fourth verses. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God that every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already it is in the world. Believe that. Already it's in the world. Now, how many, how long ago he wrote this? He said it was already in the world. All right. So, the last verse. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because... Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm going to read on and I'm going to go down and I'm going to pick up the 13th through the 17th verses. Hereby know we that dwell in him and he in us. Why? Because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. And now we move over to the fifth chapter. And we're going to read the fourth and the fifth verse. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God okay now that completes our text of the lesson and so now we just want to go in and we just want to extract a few other things from that which we have read. So we're going to go back again. And I'm going to go back to that fourth chapter in the first verse. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they be of God. Notice he said, try the spirits. Okay? Try the spirits with an S on it because the spirits a lot of times is not just one just because you see one person but sometimes that person can have indwelling false spirits in them okay whether they are of God why because many false prophets are gone out into the world what is this saying to us that we need to have an expectation. We need to be on the lookout 
our radar need to be on the spiritual radar every time you sit before a person that is bringing you the word of god or a person comes up to you and say they have a word from the lord you need to put your radar your radar your spiritual filter so that everything that they say can be able to be filtered all right the checkpoints of your spirit the checkpoints at your ear gates the checkpoints at your spiritual eye gates okay spiritual eye gates spiritual ear gates all right because if you do not put your radar on you're susceptible to wind up ingesting something that is not fully true or it just may plain be in error okay but he's telling us first of all i don't know how simple this can get believe not every spirit you cannot believe every spirit just because they run up to you and say, I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I'm a bishop. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay? You cannot. Let them prove to you by their spiritual actions who they really are. Okay? And whether or not their message is fully true. Okay? I think, I, I probably don't even need to say anything else about that verse. Let's move on to verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. In other words, recognize, you need to recognize the Spirit of God. For every spirit that confesseth that Jesus is come in the flesh, yes, is of God. Now, this is the opportunity where you need to ask some questions. Because if they haven't already told you or maybe let out what their actual profession of faith is which is yes jesus came jesus died jesus rose again jesus went back to heaven jesus paid for our sins he sent the holy spirit and uh if they ain't saying none of that or if they ain't saying all of it and jesus is the son of god uh add that to the list okay so sometimes you need to get in conversations and ask them about their faith what is it that they believe? Because oftentimes you have people in these positions and their faith is a little distorted. You know, their faith is not exactly like yours. And, and I remember uh, over somewhere I believe in the Gospels, they talk about a little leaven. All right. They may have 50% truth, but also 50% leaven that's going to corrupt the loaf. Okay. It's going to contaminate the loaf. So make sure that you are heeding to that which is at best a hundred percent truth as far as you know all right or as far as you can be able to go back and attest by reading the word of god yourself and comparing all right what these people are saying there's a lot of false prophets even on this youtube okay i'm not one of them okay <laughs> all right i'm gonna tell you the truth as far as i know all right um, so, <clears throat> but here in this second verse, it says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. This is how you're going to know a person that has the true Spirit of God. That they're going to make the confession and they're going to attest that, yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He came in the flesh to be our what? Our Savior. Okay? Verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And I told you about that contrast. John just laying it out, right? It's either you are or you're not. All right? And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist meaning um, that which is opposing, that which is in opposition of, that which is contrary um, to the beliefs of Christ. All right? Then that means you're anti. You're not going along with it, okay? So if you are one of those people and you're not confessing or you know someone that just failed to want to confess that Jesus is Lord, then yes, they are called antichrist in a sense. Yeah, it's not somebody with, with, the, with the pitchfork, the black robe on, the dark eyes, the, the black makeup around their eyes, uh, and some devilish looking mask on. No. It's whoever is not accepting the truth of God and is, is giving off a message to the next person to try to distort their beliefs. 
okay they are the ones that are labeled antichrist and there are many of them there are many of them okay the spirit of them are many okay so you need to look out for that all right and it says whereof you have heard that it sh that it should come and even now already is in the world verse four ye are of old this is an extra one verse one and verse four are extras to our lesson ye are of god little children and have overcome them okay are you of god okay and if you are of god if you have the same profession that jesus christ is come in the flesh then he says and you have overcome them you have the power to overcome the temptations the false reports the false teachings you don't have to succumb to them you don't have to buy into them because greater is he greater is the spirit of god that is in you that's able to nullify that which is error that which is false that which is a lie okay that spirit again is just like that radar god on the inside of you is going to say eh, eh, eh. leave shut your ear turn this off because they're not telling the full truth okay and you need to be aware and you need to be ready to roll out if you hear that okay all right so he says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the world meaning the antichrist the lies against god's truth that is circulating throughout the word world excuse me let's move on to this 13th verse it says now hereby know we that we dwell in him this is how you're going to know if you dwell in him and he dwells in you because he has given us his spirit now i want to just tackle and just just tackle down this word dwell hereby know we that we dwell in him okay to dwell in jesus or to dwell in god means to to rest in him to have a rest a spiritual rest in him you're not always on the run you're willing to sit in the spirit of the lord okay not always looking at your clock like some of y'all probably looking at the clock right now trying to figure out how long is she gonna be <laughs> it means that to dwell in jesus means that you're willing to remain in him you heard another word that john uses um back over in i believe the 14th chapter where he talks about abiding um 14 or 15 chapter he talks about abiding in god okay or to stay or to reside or to live in god okay this is like a positional word all right it's a positional word but at the same time it's an active word that you're doing when you dwell in him that's an active word you're choosing you're choosing to dwell in him in him and not in other things okay we're talking about first things first that 14th verse says and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior he is the savior he's not only our deliverer but he's also our preserver he delivered us once when he saved us and we professed and we confessed and asked him into our life he then became our savior but don't you know that he's still saving us today every day thereafter your initial salvation he's still preserving you so that savior is also means preservation he's keeping you okay uh-huh so yeah we need to have that that right now appreciation for salvation not just in the beginning but we still need to have it today because we need him to continue to preserve and keep us while we are in this world all right so you testify john said they testified that the father sent the son he sent jesus to be the savior of the world yes 15 says whoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god simple as this then god that's proof that god dwells in him okay talking about that proving you need to prove it okay if they say it and they believe it then it proves that the spirit of god dwells in him and he dwells in the spirit all right 16 and 
we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. Okay? We have known and we believe. We trust, okay, in this love that God has given to us. God's love is an agape love. It's unconditional. It's not, it's not based upon anything that we have done. It's all about God. He decided to love us, okay? And his love is unconditional, all right? It's unconditional. Um, but we're going to get a little bit into that twist. I don't want to just say fully unconditional. It is unconditional, but there is a condition, and we're going to get to it, okay? All right, that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit because that's now getting on the subject of our love walk. Okay, so he said at first, he said that in the 16th verse, I'm sorry, in the 15th verse, that whoever shall confess. So your confession is very important as it pertains to your love. Okay. All right, your love uh, of one another. But then he goes on to say, now we're talking about the love part of it. All right. And if you know that God has loved you, then God also wants you to love others. In other words, to love one another. Okay. So it's not that God just loves you, but God loves you and he enables you and he wants you and he commands you to love your neighbor, to love one another. And when I say love one another, there's a distinction with that. Hear me now. Because we are talking to believers. This lesson, John's uh, letter or his epistle, pastoral letters talking to the believers in Christ. And when you talk about believers, then that means of the household of faith, right? He's not talking about you loving a person that really, per se, in the world, those people who are choosing not to follow Christ, okay? He is saying loving one another, those that are of the body of believers, okay? And that's not to say we hate the people in the world either. No, we love everybody. But you need to have a special love for the people of God because God has a special love for the people of God. As for the people in the world, you love them, but you hate the sin, okay? You hate their acts that goes contrary to God's will and God's way, okay? I'm just going gonna, gonna to keep it at that. All right, so in our last verse, verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect our love is made perfect that we may have boldness when we love one another is saying that our love is then made perfect so that we may have boldness in the day of judgment so we have boldness and we can have confidence that we have done what god has told us to do which is love your neighbor as you love yourself Okay, so we have obeyed and been obedient. And so therefore, we can look forward to Christ saying, well done. Okay, well done. Because we know that we have let love lead the way. All right, as far as the continual fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, all right. So I want to talk a little bit about this world again. Because God expects for his children to have the nature like him. He has, a, God has a love nature. And that's what enables him to love us. So if he loves us, he says that we are supposed to then love others. Okay? Because we dwell in him. That love then is passed on to us. Alright? Well, if we love God and we know God loves us and we're supposed to love our neighbor then that tells us that we need to put on the nature of Christ we need to put it on okay and we talked about that before too it's not something that you um may feel like doing when it comes down to love you know love is a choice it's a choice 
It's not how about it's not how about you feel. <laughs> I feel like I love. No. Nah. He ain't asked you nothing about feelings here. He's he commanded you to do it. Okay? And so love, God's love, a divine love that comes from God and that ability, it is a choice. Now either you're gonna do it or you're gonna be disobedient. Okay? Either you're gonna be obedient to do it. Or you're going to be disobedient. So we're talking about modeling Christ's likeness. Okay? And at the root of everything God is, is love. And so we ought to be modeling and we ought to be striving and endeavoring to be like Christ. That means that we're going to have to love, do a better job at loving our brothers and sisters. Now, brothers and sisters, once again... Because I, 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 the scriptures say, Jesus say, well, who are my brothers and sisters? Those that do the will of my father. We're not talking about the people in the world because they're not interested in doing what God's will is. So I'm not saying that you need to bend, uh, uh, you need to be striving and jumping through hoops to try to love them. We're not talking about that. We're talking about loving the ones who are striving to follow Jesus Christ. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. So we're going to get out of that. We're going to go on down to this fourth and fifth verse of the fifth chapter of John, the first epistle of John. You ready? It says, for whatsoever is born of God, if you're born of God, then you're going to overcome the world. If you're born of God, then you're going to overcome the world. And we didn't give, gave you already a few ways in which you're going to be able to overcome the world. But let's see what John is saying in this chapter. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Okay, so I want to connect the dots here. Because we didn't talk about a whole lot. We talked about making sure that we don't listen to false teachers. Giving us strange ideologies. Or giving us error, beliefs things that are untrue about the word of God, okay, corrupting our spiritual minds. We talked about that. Then we talked about this love that Christ put in us. And if we dwell in him, then we're going to be like him. And we're going to be able to love our brothers and sisters. And then he comes down here and tell us that we are looking to be, or if we're looking to overcome the world, we're going to be able to do it through our faith. So faith is now being thrown into the picture for the first time in this passage. So what I will say is that faith cannot work without love. Faith cannot work without obedience. Okay? Faith cannot work without love. Faith cannot work without obedience and lastly listen this is the first part of our lesson faith cannot work without truth you need the truth of god's word because that's what your faith is going to be based on okay so you can overcome the world with these three elements walk in love obey the commandments of god and have truth walk in truth okay that's how you're going to be able to overcome the world all right, and all three of those, the Spirit of God is in, and the Spirit of God will lead you to do. Okay, so our last verse Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And this tells about the person who is this person that's going to be a true overcomer, not just some. Uh, because the world has a whole new definition of, of, of overcomer. But we're not talking about the world's way of overcoming. Okay? The world and our spiritual children of God overcoming is two different battles. Okay? But the battle that we must fight to keep our faith, all right, to be able to love people, to be able to follow out the truth, those are the things that are coming against us all the time, okay? Trying to get us to falter and fail and reject and to go backwards, to uh, compromise on. So those are the things, that's the fight for us, okay? 
But if we're going to fight this fight of faith and be able to win and be able to be victorious and overcome, then first of all, it starts with being a child of God, okay? And that's what he says. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that means that you're saved. If you believe that, then if you apply, make applicable these other three things. Remember, walking in truth, walking in love, walking in truth, walking in love, and also keeping the commandments of Jesus Christ. In other words, striving to live righteous, okay? Then you're going to be all right. You can look forward to being an overcomer, all right? So again, having a conquering faith, a victorious faith, these are the things you need to do, all right? So that will complete um, the just the extra G's of our lesson. We're shaping up. We got about four more minutes, all right? And in these four more minutes, I'm just going to summarize again what we talked about today, all right? The writer wants us to be able to recognize and test false prophets, teachers, ideologies, or idealism to prove false teachers or their false beliefs we need to check for these things we need to see if they have a true confession all right that jesus christ is lord that he died that he came as a son of god okay that he rose again and all of that part that that surrounds uh jesus christ and all that he done if they don't believe those things tell them to get to stepping or either you get to stepping whether they have love as the children of God or they love the children of God, check the love walk, okay? Because people can do a lot of hyping, but then they, a knife to the body of believers, okay? To the children of God. And lastly, are they committed to doing what God requires? In other words, obeying his commands, all right? These are the three ways that we know, um, Okay, and also as we follow these ways, it helps us to be able to maintain a conquering faith. All right, now for our ending, once again, this is what we need to do. Here's our recipe. If we want to have a conquering faith, and I'm trying to drill this in, people. If we want to have a conquering faith, we need to keep our faith. We need to strive to stay saved. That's, that's being righteous. That's following after holiness. Stay saved and untainted from the world and the world's way of thinking. We just read in one of our other chapters, um, Romans, the, the Hebrews, the 12th chapter, I believe, and the second verse. I think it was Hebrews. No, not Hebrews. Romans. The book of Romans, the 12th chapter where it says transform, let your mind be transformed and not conform to this world, okay? But if you want to have a conquering faith, here's the other thing you need to do. We need to love one another, okay? We need to love one another as Christ has loved us. Lastly, we need to keep God's commandments. He said, if you truly love me, then you're going to do what I ask you to do. You're going to keep my commandments, okay? So, and all of that comes as we ended off in this fifth verse that you are, uh, if you know, if that you are the believer is a son of God. Okay, so that kind of goes back to your faith relationship. It's about relationship, it's not about religion. All right, we can't have religion and expect to be victorious or a conqueror. We must have. A dwelling relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? You got it? Y'all got it? Y'all got it? All right. I hope you got it. All right? So you should be able to tell me at least three things that you need to do in order to be able to have a conquering faith. So we pray that you have enjoyed the lesson for today. That's it. That's all. All right? It don't get no deeper than that. Um, but I pray that you have been blessed. And certainly you're going to go forth and apply that which you have learned today. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe? All right? Subscribe. And if you don't like us after a few videos, then you can unsubscribe. All right? And certainly if you like anything, 
or if anything resonated with you, which it should if you are a believer, amen. And if you said amen, then that means you should have been giving me a thumbs up, all right? But um, nevertheless, we're not worried about the thumbs up and we really ain't worried about subscribing. We want you to hear the word. We want you to do the word. And then we want you to share the word, all right? All right, so again, we thank you for tuning in. This is Minister Coleman. We want you to have a blessed week ahead, all right? Until we meet again, do God's will. If you do that, your faith, it will be a conquering faith.